This is an interview with Laura Cola for the Youngstown Historical Center of Industry and Labor Oral History Project titled Women at Work. The interview is being conducted at the Youngstown Historical Center of Industry and Labor, known as the Steel Museum, on April 17, 2023. My name is Nicole Marino. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, where did you and your family live when you were growing up? I grew up on the south side of Youngstown. Um, we actually lived on Boston, just in two different places on the same street. Um, one was down towards like Market Street or you know Southern Boulevard, Market Street. The other one was up by Shirley Road. So okay. And what did your parents do for a living? Um, my mom was a nurse, and my dad was he worked for Pepsi for like twenty five years. Then when my uncle passed away, uh, we had a family barber shop. My grandpa started it. And my uncle had it going. When he passed away young. My dad retired from Pepsi and took the barbershop over. Now he's retired. Okay. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Woodrow Wilson High School on the south side. Okay. And when did you graduate? 1986. What'd you do after high school? After high school, um, let's see. Hmm. I worked various jobs like waitressing, bartending, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> I got a good job at Tamco Distributors, and I was there for several years, um, but ultimately, um, with the embezzlement, there was embezzlement, and the Farmores closed down, because they were the distributor for Farmore. Okay. So, in 1994, I lost my job there, and at the time, I was a single mother of, uh, he would have been, he was born in 1991, so he would have been three. Okay. Um, I lost my job and I was bartending and waitressing and one of my friends was a laborer, a union laborer, and he says, why don't you, I, th I thought about getting in the laborer's union. And he said, Laura, he said, he says, you don't want to do that. He says, why don't you try getting in the operator's union? I said, all right, you know, so I went and I applied and that was in December, it would be in the December of 95. And I went and applied, and it happened to be the week they were taking applications that I went there. They only do it one, uh, two weeks a year. Oh. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be the time they were taking applications, and I got in. Okay. And I've been in ever since. I'm, I'll have 27 years in June. Very good. Um, what was your very first job? My very first job would have been, you mean out, out of high school? In or out, whatever. Ooh, I worked at that door park when oh, I was 14 years old. How about that? My uncle was one of the owners, Pat Duffy. That's great. Uh-huh. Um, I was probably 14, I think. And then when you did go to Tampco, do you remember what year you started there? Um, not exactly. Um, I want to say like 1988. Okay. Fair enough. I think it was there eight years. Okay. Um, so, you mentioned your uncle owned Idora, so that's how you got in there. And then you he mentioned. One of the owners. One of the owners, I'm sorry. Um, and then you mentioned that one of your friends recommended that you um, apply to be an operator, which is where you're at today. And how did you find your job at Tampco? Um, cool. I think I just applied. They were they were doing mass hiring at the time. Okay. Um, because actually my seniority number was pretty low. It's like they had gone from just having a couple hundred employees. Like within the, I got hired, I think my seniority number was like 400 and something. And then after that, there was like 3,000 people there for a while until all that stuff went down. Wow. What, um, what was your job title there? Um, I did various jobs. Um, I ran the tow motor. I did palletizing. I worked on the line, piece pick sometimes okay. um, just various mm -hmm. as warehouse work just stuff that needed done sure mm -hmm. um, so we'll talk a little bit about um, your work with the operators union um, what kind of training did you get when you first started there or what type of training was required for you well, um, you didn't really have to have experience, so what they did, it went through a process, you took a test, 
you went for an interview and then they let you know whether you got in or not because they only take so many people every year. And once you get in, then you go to school. You first, you can go to work right away once you're in. But they send you down for orientation and then it's five weeks out of the year you had to go down to New Alexandria, Pennsylvania for training. So three weeks would be field training, which would be on the machines. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks would be classroom to learn all the stuff. And this went on for four, th four years. Okay. But you also could work in the meantime, and I learned a lot on the job, even more than I learned at the apprenticeship, for sure. Okay. Um, so there, there was the apprenticeship, and then you got a lot of on-the-job training as you went, sure. Okay. Um, give me a couple examples of the, the type of work you're doing there. Oh, boy. Um, well, I've done everything from road construction to pipelining to uh, uh, building trades, uh, building buildings, to working in the GM plant doing like demo and like putting in the new lines. Um, I was there when they built the paint shop. Um, I couldn't even tell you like every job I've ever been on. I, I couldn't even remember. Sure but in every company I've ever worked for, because we work out of the union hall, so we work for different contractors all the time. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, I did a lot of like road construction, like, you know, just like, you know, simpler machines and stuff like that. And I think it was 2005, I finally got my crane certifications. Okay. And uh, since then, I've worked a lot of the building trades jobs. It's mostly, you know, like crane and forklift and um, law and, you know, I, a telescoping forklift. Okay. So each, um, and do, when you want to learn a new job, do you have to go back and get re-educated for each new thing, or, or is no. it more of an on-site as you go it's kind of thing? On-site, like um, usually when they call you out, they're going to call you out for something that's on your list of thing, qualifications you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the, and sometimes when you get on a job, you may have to do something, you know, they may ask you to do something you're not real familiar with, but you just tell them, hey, I'm not that familiar with that. And they, and if, you know, they'll give you a minute and okay. usually, usually you can figure it out. And they're pretty good about being supportive for, for when you're newer at, at a, a, a position I mean, you aren't as experienced in. When I was newer, things were a little different. Um, now, yeah, I mean, I just tell them flat out. I mean, mm -hmm. you know. But no, I've had no problem with. Okay, when you were newer, did, was it well, more difficult because you were a woman? Yes. Yeah. Back then, I mean, we're talking twenty-seven years ago. Mm -hmm. It was not. There was not as many of us, and it was not as well accepted. Um, so some guys didn't want to help me and didn't want me to learn anything. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a lot of good ones that did. So it just depend. It really just depended on the situation, on whether you got any patience or not. Okay. Um. So let's talk a little bit about, and I know you'll have to, you'll have to pick and choose because I recognize that you're doing a lot of different jobs over the years in different ways. But um, talk about some of the jobs and the conditions. For example, what what's a what's a typical day, and what are typical challenges that might seem universal to the different spots that you're in, or? I don't know if that's well, fair. Well, you know, I mean, the a, a typical day, you know, you're getting up at 5 a.m., depending on where you're working. If you're working an hour away, you're getting up earlier than that. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to the site. Like, you're going to new sites all the time, so you don't know what you're going to get when you get there, what kind of reception you're going to get, you know, or how everybody's going to treat you, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's kind of nerve-wracking. But um, it just depends on what I'm running. I mean, usually we'll just go in, we'll have a safety meeting. We'll go to our machine to check the oil, you know, get the machine ready to go and, and go to our jobs. You know, if I'm running crane, then it just depends on who I'm working with or what we're, what we're doing. If I'm working with the iron workers, we're, you know, we're setting steel. If I'm working with, you know, the pipe fitters, we're moving pipe. It mm -hmm. just depends. Um, when you're on a road construction job, um, depending on, like if you're running an excavator, I mean, same thing. You would go in, have your meeting, and then you would go to your machine and just start going. Okay. Um, describe a moment at work that was not part of a typical day and how you were able to overcome that experience. Oh, there's been so many. 
<laughs> um, well, there was one time that we were in Wampum, Pennsylvania. I think it was 2005. I'll never forget this. Um, it's easier. The moments that you'll never forget are the easier ones, you know. Um, we were running the rock trucks um, in a quarry type job. And um, I was coming down the hill loaded. It was a big 773 rock truck. And I was coming down the hill loaded and another truck came right up the hill and hit me head on. So that day I'll never forget. Wow. Um, my, my, tr my truck was smashed. They had to drag it up the hill with a dozer. I ended up having to go to the hospital. I was pretty beat up. And uh, it was just crazy. It was a crazy day. So was it how? We don't still to this day know why he, he came up the hill in, in my lane. Um, the man has now passed away, but not from that, obviously. Right. But, okay. Um, we, I never did really know why. I had the right of way because I was loaded. It's always that way because you can't stop them yeah. trucks when they're yeah. loaded. So, I mean, that's one of the experiences I'll never forget for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what hours and shifts did you work? Or do you work, I should say? Um, there's been all kinds of difference. Like, I've worked 712s, I've worked 710s, I've worked 40 hours, 5.8s, 410s. Um, I've worked five tens, six tens. It just depends on the job, the contractor, and what's going on. Like this particular job, this is the second contractor I've worked for on this site, and the year I, I came with them in July, but I was with the other company for 18 months, and I had the best year I've ever had there. We were working so much overtime. We were working almost every Saturday and some Sundays, and I was the foreman, so people didn't want to come in, then I had to come then in. Then you had to do. So. Mm -hmm. um, but that really does differ on the job, the company, what's going on. We, we can work 712s, we could work 40 hours, it just depends. And do you, um, do you rotate day and night shifts? or? I have worked some night shifts. Um, I try not to these days, but yeah, I never did mine nights. I've done nights several times over the years. Do you, do you get an opportunity to like bid out of the shift that you do or don't like? Um, no, once you take the job, I mean, you're, you're pretty much it there. Is I mean, what I mean is. we do have the ability to drag up, we call it, or quit, but I've never done that. Um, I've just always wrote them out till the end. Some have been better than others. Some have been miserable. Some have been okay. When, when you're getting a new, a, a new job that you're going to, do you, do you, they give you an expectation of how long um, that job might Sometimes you, you have a clue and sometimes you don't. I mean, I've got called for jobs like one day that have turned into months. Oh. I've gotten called for jobs that were supposed to be months and they were a couple of weeks. I mean, it just depends. They, not everybody when they call the union said, when I get laid off a job, I go back to the union hall and then the next time, you know, a contractor can call there and request me or I'll just be in order on the list, whatever. Okay. They don't always tell our dispatcher um, how, how long it'll be. be. Okay. Um, which shift do you prefer and why? Um, nowadays, I prefer days, but there was a time where I functioned very well on night. Night um, now it just seems I think because I'm getting older mm -hmm. and I just don't want to stay up that way. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't sleep well, you know, at my age and as it is. So, and, you know, everybody in the neighborhood's doing stuff during the day. So it's kind of hard. I would have to say my preference would be day turn. Would be day turn? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I did used to love nights though. What was, what'd you like about it? I don't know. It just, um, it always seemed like it was easier on nights. Like there wasn't as many people around and I didn't mind the hours at all. But it just, I mean, I guess everything just changes as you get older. Sure. Um, what was your working relationship like with your coworkers? Uh, for the most part, I mean, uh, for the most part, I get along pretty well with almost everybody. I do not take much from anybody. And, th th you know, that's come from 27 years of a male-dominated area. Mm -hmm. I've had to have pretty thick skin. And I've had to be able to stand up for myself. I would say the majority I get along with just fine. Um, now, early, 
that wasn't the case, you know, but they didn't want us out there back, you know, back then. So yeah. I just, but I, I don't know how I did it, but I, I just made it through. I mean, no matter what adversity, like, I mean, yeah, I went home from work crying some days and, uh, you know, I've had the VA call me, hey, what's going on? Somebody's telling me you're having a hard time, you know, and I'd be like, nope, if I need you, I'll call you, you know, but mm -hmm. I'd say now for the majority, I get along with most people. Okay. Can you... Um can you think of any incidents that would like exemplify what it was like early on in your career to specific incidents? Well, you know, like there's a time I was oiling for this guy and oiling is like when on a big crane, they have an oiler, like an assistant, like I would check the oil and I would do everything in apprentices. Usually that's what apprentices do. Okay. Um, he was very adamant about the fact that he didn't think I belonged out there, but I, you know, they all used to say, you belong in the kitchen, you know? So he made life tough. And that's the one time I was telling you my BA called me because somebody had told him, you know, he's really awful to her, you know? And I, but I handled the situation myself. And every time I had to go through that, I was a little bit stronger for it, yeah. you know? Um, the specific things he did, he was just cruel. He was just, no matter what, like an example, we were working on the Lake Mountain Bridge, and uh, it was freezing out. And uh, an oiler just stands there, especially when they're driving pile like we were doing. And the teamster backed the truck up to the crane so I could sit in the truck because it, I mean, it was freezing. He made me get out and stand there. You know what I mean? Because you're supposed to stand. Yeah, and there, there, and was, he, no there was no reason. There was no real reason for it. He just but just stuff like that, like, um, you know, just cruel. There's so many of them out there, like, you know, that they want to start rumors about you or, um, you know, like, make it seem like you're doing something wrong or I've, ha I've had all kinds of, I mean, it'd be so hard to narrow it all down. Yeah. So many things happened back then. But there was a lot of great guys, too. I want to reiterate that. But it just, there were some that were just heartless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you don't run into that too much anymore. Like more so, more so right when now you first. I'm actually working for a company, and it's been a while. But um, now they don't do anything. But the one guy kind of in charge is the day I met him. I was like, oh yeah, he's not real woman friendly, you know. But he doesn't say anything or do anything to me. He just treats me like I'm stupid. Which whatever, you know. Okay, that's that guy over there that has two years experience and knows more than I do, and I have twenty seven. And you have twenty seven. You know, that's just his mentality. Mm -hmm. So it's it's, it's okay. <laughs> That's sort of... I don't care. You know, I don't lose sleep over that stuff. Okay. Is he, out of curiosity, is he an older guy? Um, I wouldn't say he's... No? More, I would say maybe a few years older than me. I'm, okay. I'm one of the older guys, or the older gals. Like <laughs> okay. Um, I wouldn't... He's probably a couple, few years older than me, I would guess. Maybe not. Um, how does management or administration treat workers in general? Um, that is really company specific. I have worked for some amazing, amazing people. And I have worked some, for some real jerks. So it's just really company specific. Like this la the last company I worked for before this one, he was the best boss I've ever had in my entire life. He treated me like an equal. I, I, he made me the foreman. He valued my opinion. It doesn't happen very often for me like that, you know? So he was really great. And I've had a lot like that. But, you know, some are just, I mean, it just depends mm -hmm. on who you're working for because some of, some of them will treat us like idiots, you know, and it's just the way it is. How, um, do you get an opportunity to work with other women very often? Yes. Um, on this particular job, there's quite a few of us at one time. After we're done, I'll show you a picture of women, women in construction week. There was a picture of, and that wasn't even all of us, but there's several on this job, but there was over a thousand construction workers on this site at one time. Okay, and how, how's your working relationship like with them? The majority of the women are awesome and amazing. Every now and then you'll get one that has a little chip on her shoulder, and it's like, whatever, you just kind of stay away from them, but, um, we all really do try to stick together, the majority of us. Good. Um, 
And you're part of the union, obviously. Uh, have you ever had to go through any strikes while you're on the job? Uh, no, I did. I, I did sit on a pick, couple picket lines they had, but they weren't actual strikes. They were just picketing a non-union contractor building something. Okay. Um, so I, once in a while, when you're laid off and you're not working, um, they'll ask you to do that if they're doing it. But I really haven't been off much in the last ten years, so I haven't had that kind of time. You've been working pretty steadily. Good oh, for yeah, you. Yeah, I've been pretty good. Yeah. I get a lot of. Re I get requested a lot now because I'm just. It's to the point where I've been doing this long enough. People know who I am. You know. And you're producing good results, and they know that. Right. I okay. show up for work every day on time, and I do my job. Very good. Um, have you ever had to report an agreement for yourself or for someone else? I have never filed agreements. Not that I couldn't have many times. Mm -hmm. I just never have. I've always just handled it. I've always handled it my way. Right. Um, my way is not what everybody does, but I... I just always handled it. Well, and let's... And it never really got to the point where I couldn't handle it. I mean, there's a few times, you know, I cry on the way up from work, but I mean, that's just... And what's, what's your approach when you're, like, struggling with a scenario like that where somebody else may be willing to go ahead and escalate it into grievance land, but how, how do you... What's your technique for getting through some of those rougher spots Sometimes like I that? Just, like, you mean a grievance against a, another person? Like yeah, for, or just for harassment or whatever. I basically sometimes it just takes me telling that person off. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them now. I mean, I kind of have a reputation. Like the younger kids coming in, like they think I'm mean, but I'm really not. But uh, I'm just a lot harder than I used to be because I mean, sometimes all it does is takes me telling that person off because you can't do that on a construction site without getting in too much trouble. And I'm better afterwards. I don't hold a grudge. There's very few people that I could tell you right now that even if they were awful to me, that I still like wouldn't be cordial to if I had to work with them. Okay. There's a couple that I would never ever speak to, but very few. Very few. Mm -hmm. And and that helps you not only resolve your issue with this other person, but make you feel as if you've expressed yourself so you can yeah, usually not carry it, it with you. Usually once I get it out, um, I'm pretty much over it. Very good. Um, but like my way of handling it isn't every way of handling it. But that's <laughs> um, what do you enjoy the most about your job? Um, I really enjoy like I, I enjoyed learning everything coming up like you know trying a new machine or, or you know getting <clears throat> developing my skills on certain machines and stuff like that and there's a lot of um, camaraderie out there you know and um, I don't know we've had a lot of fun on jobs uh, my I'd say my favorite part is you know it was coming up and learning everything and then when I finally became a crane operator and then my first crane job and then you know now it's not as fun as it used to be. But I'm ready to retire, but I, I have five years left. So, no, but I mean that I would say, and the paychecks are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all of that. I mean, it's you know, yeah. all the things I love about it are some of, some of the things I hate about it too. You know what I mean? It just it just depends. What what do you what do you like the least about your job? Sometimes it's running a certain machine or working with certain people, um, getting up so early, it's getting on my nerves. But um, this is, like coming up, that never bothered me. But I always liked meeting the new people and everything like that. Um, but what I dislike about it the most is like, like I said, working with people who are, you know, haters and, you know, or running certain machines that I really don't like to run, you know, or they're a little harder on your body because I'm just getting old. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I would say that's it. Uh, what was the atmosphere for women like in your workplace? <sighs> Gosh, that's. I mean, it depends. Um, some places it's not good. Some places I don't even notice so much anymore, though. So I can't even know if I can honestly honestly say um for the most part a lot of the guys I work with now kind of came up with me so you know it's it's okay mm -hmm. um every now and then you get 
around people that make it a little less okay. But I just don't really pay attention to them people. Like, I do not lose sleep over anything anymore. You know what I mean? I used to. I used to take it home with me and I used to be mad. And I, you know, it's like, it's not worth it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so when you think about, so can you think of any good examples of when men were supportive and encouraging? Yes. When I had breast cancer. Um, a lot of the now a lot of the local guys. Me being in twenty seven years, I know a lot of them. All the different trades, I know a lot of the local guys because we end all end up on the same jobs together if they're local. Yeah. When I got breast cancer, they were very supportive. I got a lot of phone calls. They collected a bunch of money for me on the job sites. Um, they they checked up on me. Um, you know. So that was very touching. And I had five surgeries, so every time I had surgery, you know, that they, they were always checking on me, you know. And even ones that I didn't see through the period of me going through that, like I saw them on this job, they're like, oh, how are you doing, you know. So in that way, they have, you know, a lot of them have been very good to me. And they're genuinely interested in yes. your well-being. Good. Yes. Some um, are, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, and how about women? Same question, the same thing supportive and encouraging oh, yes yeah. my group my girls yeah we uh there's there's a there's a tight-knit group of us um we, i don't know all the girls on the job obviously because there's a lot of younger ones coming in but like me shirley karen um there's a few more that we we're, we always seem to end up around each other we definitely support each other like um on this particular job shirley i don't know if she told you about how she raised money for we raised money for breast cancer and we sold t-shirts on the job and that's another way the guys were very supportive we raised the very first the second year of this job because that's when i got on there she was there the first year we raised forty one thousand dollars for the joni abdu wow. breast cancer center selling t-shirts the guys bought them their pink shirts and they all wear them that's fantastic and then last year we did it and i think i want to say it was fourteen thousand. we didn't do as good because there wasn't as many people and we had the shirts from but the company bought the shirts, donated them to us, and we sold them, and all the profits went to Joni Abdu. That's great. And all of us girls rallied together to make that happen. There was, Shirley's the ringleader in that. She's very persuasive. <laughs> but um, she's the ringleader, but we all rallied together, and we would go there at 6 o'clock in the morning and sell the shirts before work at the gate. We would all meet there. I could show you pictures of that, too. So, yeah, so the girls, there's a, there's a tight-knit group of us. And I try to support any female on the job. Um, some of them don't openly accept it, and that's I'll back off and move on. But I try to openly support them. Every woman I see come in, young, young, old, doesn't matter. Good. Um, did you ever feel like a minority? Like <laughs> every day. <laughs> I still am the minority. I mean, right now, the company I'm working for, there's two women. And there's 50. And there's two women. One's an iron worker, first year apprentice, and me. And you. Mm -hmm. Karen's um, on that job. She's just working for a different company. And Shirley's there too. She's just on a different company also. So when you think back over the job sites, obviously you go to different job sites all the time because you work for the union. Are there proper facilities for you to have privacy or restroom or locker room or shower rooms on all of them, most of them, some of them, none of them? Some. I like this one. Uh, now we have access to the indoor women's room, but when before the building was done and all the plumbing was in and stuff, they did bring locks for the Porter Jones for us girls, but the guys keep cutting them off, but whatever. That's a jo that's an issue. I have been on jobs where I had, oh yeah, they're just big babies. I had a Porter John once I put a portable heater in. It was freezing when we did VNM, and those guys kept unplugging the heater. It, they're just babies. But, um... Now, I have had jobs when I was in road construction where I had to climb up in the back of the dump truck to pee, mm -hmm. get out of the excavator and climb in the back of the dump truck to pee. I've had to leave the job site and go down to the gas station. But that was a lot of years ago. Um, there was a couple other road jobs where I just had to go in the woods. But for the most part, they were supposed to have facilities. Now, they don't have to have separate so I didn't run into the separate facilities until some of these bigger projects started coming around here, like um, power plant and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this job we're on now. 
And the bigger companies, they'll do that. They'll put locks on employer dogs, but it's not always that way. Okay. Well, and that was going to be the kind of the next thing I asked you too was, is it typical for there to be facilities for anybody at some of these sites? Because it sounds like sometimes... Well, it's been a lot of years. I mean, normally, yes. Normally, there's always facilities, uh, Porter Johns, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there was a few times over the years. And road construction, they can't really have Porter Johns. So a lot of people just have to go down to the gas station or, like I said, climb in the back of the dump truck. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been those situations for sure. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So... Are you married? I am not. I'm divorced. I've been divorced since 2012. Okay. And um, so did you work this? Did You were working as an operator during the time you were married, though, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Did it, um, how did it affect your relationship with your husband at that time? Um, our relationship, I don't think my job really caused any conflict between us. Conflict. Uh, maybe when I had to go to school at the beginning and he had to take care of the kids and stuff, you know. But for the most part, that was the least of our problems. Okay. <laughs> and how, like, um, and so how many children do you have? I have uh, one son and one stepdaughter, but she's my daughter. So I'm mm-hmm. um, She is going to be 34 in July. She's still... I'm still her mother as far as she's concerned, even though we're, I divorced her father. Mm-hmm. And then my son is 30, he just turned 32 last week. I have three grandkids, my daughter has three kids. So how, how, was, how was child care when they were small? Um, we struggled a little bit because he worked, but he only worked, uh, he was a landscaper, so he didn't work all year round. So um, mm-hmm. With my job, it, got, it was really hard at the beginning with the kids to do the hours and stuff that I have to do. Um, <clears throat> because he wasn't really willing to do all the stuff that I did, you know what I mean? So I'd be working all these hours and still have to go home and do everything. So, or a good majority of things. So uh, I guess it was a big struggle when the kids were younger. Sure, yeah. sure. Because you... Because, I mean, I'd, I'd have to work 12-hour shifts, you know, and they had their sports, and all, my son, and they were both athletic. So it's like I'd, I'd just go straight to the ball field after, and I was getting home at 9, 10 o'clock at night, you know. So it, it was definitely a struggle when the kids were young. Mm-hmm. Now it's not so bad. But. And were you still, like, were you still expected to be the one who straightened up the house and cleaned and did all the housework Well, for stuff? the most part, like, he didn't cook. Um Laundry, well, he would do laundry, but he, no, I mean, it was one of the reasons we're ex. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, you know, and that, that's not uncommon, so. Right, no, uh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying he didn't do anything, but it's sure. like you had to tell him step by step, and it was just, I got over it. I had three, two kids, I didn't need to. Um, um, was it relevant, did, did you ever have to take care of your parents at the same time you were taking care of your kids and working? Was no, that my, ever my scenario? parents are um, both still alive. Oh, good for you. My dad's 81 and my, my mom's 70, so. Good for you. They're both still living on their own right now. That's great. Mm-hmm. Well, my dad's remarried yet, my, step, you know, my stepmom. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add about your working life? I don't know. I think you covered a lot. Um, is there anything you can think of that you didn't ask that you would like to know? I am going to ask you a little bit about Idora Park, kind of outside of the main meat of this, but that's, that's a fan favorite here at the museum. So tell I, me about your experience there. I worked the French fry stand, and uh, I don't know, it's hard to remember. I was 13, 14 <laughs> years old. I mean, it was fun and exciting. Um, What do you want to know about it? Like, I don't know. My sister, we all worked there um, when we were young. And there would be employee softball games, and there would be concerts, and there would be, you know. I worked the French fry stand mostly, but then I, I did work somewhere else there. I think I worked, like, in the ice cream stand or something for a while. Okay. I can't remember how long I worked there. Because I know in 86 is when... 84 at Burn. I can't remember. 
I never got to go there, so that's part of my curiosity too, because it's part yeah, I think of. It burned in '84, and then my uncle actually died not long after. I think maybe '86. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you, oh, I will ask you these. Can you think of any incidents at work where there was an accident? Oh. Unfortunately. Do you, do you want to tell a story about that? Um, God, there's been a few. I was on the Lake Milton Bridge, um, I think it was 2003. I wasn't here the day, there the day it happened, but one of the laborers got killed. In fact, they named the bridge after him, Pete Delucia. Oh, from really? Struthers. If you, walk, if you drive across the 76 bridge over Lake Milton, it's Pete, Pete Delucia Memorial Bridge. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, he um, was holding on to a barrier clamp. They were setting barrier wall, and the crane got too close to the wires, and it jumped, and he got electrocuted. Um, then there was an accident I was in at work, the, when the truck accident. Yeah. And then in, in uh, when was this, uh, 2013, 14, we were at GM. And uh, they were demo. We were demoing presses, and they were taking big pieces outside and cutting it up. And a piece fell on one of the laborers. He lived, but he got crushed. Oh. Um. I'm trying to think if there's any more that I was actually on the job. There's been a lot of accidents over the years. I wasn't necessarily there. That you weren't there. Sure. Um, do you remember any episodes of violence at the workplace? <laughs> Uh, they get, they get, those guys, violence as far as you guys getting in fights or violent, like no, nobody killing anybody or anything like that, but those guys get heated sometimes. <laughs> Last week there was a little incident, two guys got into it. They didn't physically alter it, but it shut work down for a little while, but yeah, those guys will get heated. I've been involved in some heated discussions, but. Physically, I think I witnessed maybe once or twice them getting physical, like fist, punching each like other. Like fisticuffs, yeah. okay. But as far as guns or anything like that, I've heard of it happening, but I've never witnessed I it. I mean, I feel like when grown men punch each other, that's violent enough. Right. But uh, I, I, I've heard stories about people bringing guns on site and threatening people and stuff like that, but I have not witnessed okay. it. Okay. Um, was being part of a local union beneficial to you and your coworkers? It's been extremely beneficial to me. I've made a very good living and a very good career. Um, like the, it seems like the pros outweighs, outweigh the cons. I mean, I didn't always feel that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, why am I putting myself through this? You know, because things were hard. I mean, it's, it's not an easy career. It's not an easy job to get into physically, mentally. It's just not, but I'm glad I did it. I mean, it was extremely beneficial for me. I wouldn't have everything I have now, if, you know, the good insurance that I have, everything. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Now we're done. I wish I'd asked you those before I asked you about Idora. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Oh, it's no problem. <laughs>